morning, church. Good morning to those who are watching on Facebook. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers in the auditorium and online. Happy Father's Day. You can hug your father wherever he is. Give him an air hug, something. But we bless the Lord and we say Happy Father's Day to the King of all glory. We say Happy Father's Day to the God who never fails. Amen. Hallelujah. The Word of God says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make Him known. They speak without a sound, a word. Their voice is never heard, yet their message has gone through the earth. And their words to all the world. We are the vessels of the living God. If the earth can show for the glory of God, then we can do so much more, amen? Then we can do so much more, amen? Are we ready to worship the Lord? Are we ready to give Him glory? Hallelujah! We bless Him because He's good. We bless Him because He's awesome. We bless Him because He is worthy of all our worship. Hallelujah! Let's bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! You're worthy to be praised, Lord. Hallelujah! Can we put our hands together? We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Turn into eye Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you hey. No like you Say into the darkness now Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise Out of the ashes we rise Say there's no one like you
that Jesus Christ. Oh, he is Lord, he is Lord.
verse says, I want to live above the world. Listen to these words. Though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints. In higher ground, I want to scale the utmost height, ah, the utmost height, and catch a gleam, yes, God, of glory bright, but still.
we're encouraging you that it's not too late to invite someone to join. Happy Father's Day to the Kingdom Champion. Happy Father's Day to prospective fathers and all the fathers viewing online. Today is your day. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice with you all and be glad. Praise the Lord. You're welcome to Jesus' house, a place where men and women are empowered for God they live in. Please take your seats and enjoy the presence of God. Before I hand over to the praise team, I want us to listen and to view a video presentation from the youth department. Praise the Lord. To my dad. Dear dad. Dear dad. Dear dad. Dear dad. Dear dad. Dear Dad, thank you for being a best friend, a parent, a good role model, and more. I pray God gives you the success and accomplishments you need and want in life. I pray God preserves your life to see me successful so I can make you proud and to say a special thanks in taking a big part in raising me these last 14 years. You have never failed me. You have passed on your intelligence, and for that, I appreciate you. I also appreciate you for not holding back and telling me all that I need to know and more. I thank you despite all the lectures you give daily and I appreciate you beyond words. I thank God for your life, your love, your care and your wisdom. Thank you for your advice and your lectures. I pray that the Lord sustains your life and continues to bless you. Thank you, Daddy, for everything. I want to thank you so much for the many lectures and the laughters non-stop. But most importantly, the way you grew up wasn't pretty, but you didn't let that define how you grew me up. A virtuous man, that is what defines you. I just want to show forth my gratitude towards you for always making sure that your love towards me is patient. I thank you often over the years, but I don't think that I've been detailed enough or even showed as much gratitude of recent. I can't express the bountiful joy I feel when I remember those endless times when you lifted me from danger or put yourself in discomfort or harm's way so that I'd be okay. All those late night projects in prep school, building a chicken suit, building a boat, none of them will ever be forgotten. Oh, definitely not. And now that I've grown, you may not hear me speak like this so often, but my love is still there. You were the first, you were the first role model I ever had, the only male figure that I adored and aspired to be. That level of respect is still there within my heart. And now I would love to officially thank you for all that you have done and that which you will continue to do. I couldn't have asked for anyone better be my I even start should I start from birth where you have always been there for me or should I start from where you try to groom me into the best that I can be I think I should first and foremost thank God for such a blessing I'd like to thank God for a motivator when I needed to be motivated I'd like to thank God for a teacher when I needed to be taught and for a hard-working caring and loving father. I'm aware that no one is perfect, but in my eyes, I'd say I have the perfect dad. I just want to first thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and favor upon your life. Dad, you have always been there for me since I was born, and for me. You are always there to encourage, motivate, and go the extra mile.
that you're devoted to Christ. I love that you are overly generous. I love that you love your children, that you do almost anything for us. I love that you listen to me and try your best to understand me, even though it's one of the hardest things to do. I love that you're honest and hardworking. I love that you're funny and open-minded. I love that you value family and friendship. I love that you're my dad. I love you so, so much. Happy Father's Day. Love you, Pops. Happy Father's Day. Love you so much. I love you, Dad. Happy Father's Happy Day. Happy Father's Day. We celebrate you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to every man where they fight for their responsibility. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to you. God a round of applause. God we exalt you. God we exalt your name. As we continue to go higher in you Father our prayer is that we will be consistent in our walk in our devotion so that we will grow grow and come up higher as the title of our scriptures the, the message says to come up higher in God. Let that constantly be our Press to go higher in God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hey.
Just go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Bless him. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. We're coming up higher in Christ. Just bless his holy name wherever you are. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Almighty. We will not remain where we are. We're coming up higher. We will not remain the same. We will always grow in you. Our life spiritually will not be stagnant. We will grow from one level of grace to another level of grace. I pray for everyone listening to this broadcast this morning. Your spiritual life will not be stagnant. In the mighty name of Jesus. The progress you ought to be making. By the help of the Holy Spirit. You will make progress. I will make progress. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our Heavenly Father we thank you. God the Father we thank you. God the Son we thank you. God the Holy Spirit we thank you. As we hear your word this morning, sanctify us with the truth. Your word is the truth. Sanctify us, O oh God, that our lives will not remain the same. We will move to the next level of maturity. We will move to the next level of grace. Lord, I pray this morning that every area of our lives that we have been struggling, Lord, we receive grace to grow in you. We know you are in us, but we pray that you will be formed in us. And when we see you, we shall look like you. Help us to progress in our spiritual journey. Help us to make progress. Moving forward is progress. Moving in circle is movement. Lord, help us to make progress and move forward to the next level in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to come up higher in every area that we're having difficulty growing. Help us as we hear your word. Let this word that we will hear today sanctify us. Let it transform us. Let it bring about the well needed transformation that we need so that we can begin to behold ourselves looking like Christ. That the mind of Christ will be in us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As I speak on your behalf, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God, to speak your might. Help me to speak your truth. And I pray you will sanctify your word in the heart of your children. As they hear it, let it bring about change. For everyone listening to this broadcast, as you hear the word today, may this word sanctify your heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah, oh God reigns. Hallelujah, oh God reigns. Forever, forever, all my days. Hallelujah. 
Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Glory. Thank you, choir. I want to welcome all the fathers who are also watching this broadcast this morning. We want to thank God for your lives. And we just want you to know that the role God has called you to play in life, you will not fail. You will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to give a special um, thanks. I know I will do it later, but I want to set it out going early. The women of favor, we love you. Praise the Lord. On a dip on top of things, man. <laughs> Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Philipp Philippians. <laughs> oh boy. Philippians chapter 1. I will not say that this. Today's sermon is the final for the series. I will not tell you the part anymore. Because it looks like I don't know when I'm going to land the plane. But it will land, but not today. Praise the Lord. As the Holy Spirit has revealed a bit more, and I felt that I should share it with us, there is a reason for which God has been leading me on this path to speak on the topic, come up higher to spiritual maturity. I believe God wants to do something in our individual lives. I believe that we need to be at a place spiritually so that God can use us mightily in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 1. We want to read... Verse 9 to 11, if we can get it in the uh, NLT, that will be fine. Philippians chapter 9. What did I say? Happy Father's Day. Chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Praise the Lord. For the past three weeks, we have been on a journey on this topic, come up higher to spiritual maturity. I will not go into the past, but I just want to uh, mention a few things that we started, then we can continue. Uh, we we're looking at the, the, the signs of spiritual maturity. And the first one we said was that person, he or she, will have a desire for what? Holiness. And what? A desire for holiness rather than what? Happiness. Good. 
The second thing we mentioned was that he or she will have an attitude of what? Giving rather than what? Receiving. Now, number three, we said that he or she will have a preference for serving rather than to being served. So, we're going to go into number four. And before we go into that, I just want to make the point again that spiritual maturity is not about what we do or what you do. It's about who we become. Amen? Its essence is found in conforming ourselves to the character of God. Spiritual maturity is not seen in the way we look. It's not seen in the way we dress. It is seen in what we become. Looks may be deceiving. There is a difference between acting matured and being matured. The essence of spiritual maturity does not relate to knowledge that we gain or skills that we acquire. Rather, it is to become the kind of person whose character imitates God. And that is God's desire for every one of us. That we become the kind of person, the kind of man, the kind of woman, the kind of father, the kind of mother, whose character imitates God. It is the transformation process by which we allow the indwelling Christ to express himself in and through us. I believe that Christ gave us the Holy Spirit that he may express himself in us and through us. He's gone to be with the Father. For those of us that have been saved, he gave us his spirit so that he can continue to live here on earth in us and through us. And this enables us to bring God the Father glory. So it was against this background that Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Christians in Philippi. In Philippians 1, verse 9 to 11, it said, this is my prayer for you. This is Paul praying for the believers. That's your love, number one, may abound more and more. I'm going to break up these four verses into four headings. That will form four different parts. Love being what we're going to talk about today. So you're going to, we're, going to, we're going to zoom in on love. So number four. A matured Christian is marked by abounding love. A matured Christian is marked or identified by abounding love. It says, my prayer is that your love abound more and more. That your love may abound more and more. I believe one of the first mark, if you want to sense maturity in a believer is that continuous abounding in love. Christ said all the laws were summed up in love. All the laws are what? Summed up in what? Love. One word, love. 
Because Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40 says, Matthew 22, 20, 37 to 40 says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first, com the first and the greatest commandment. And second is like it. Love your neighbor as your what? Self. Believe you me, my brothers and my sisters. If we love our neighbors as ourselves, this world will be a better place. This world will be a much better place. Because what you cannot do to yourself, you cannot do it to your neighbor. He said, all the law and the prophet hang on these two. What are these two? Love God with all your heart. And then what? Love your enemy. As your what? Sorry, your neighbor as your self. We'll soon get there. It's part of it. We'll get there shortly. He also taught us in John chapter 13, verse 35. Jesus taught us. He's our greatest example. I can't stand here and preach nothing else but Jesus. So he's our greatest example. So he taught us in John 13, 35, he said, they will know you are my disciples by the way that you love one another. Who will know? The people of the world. He said, this is how they will know that you are born again, that you are a disciple of Jesus by the way you love one another. One of the things we must notice about this love is that the Philippians already possessed it. And then Paul prays that the love they already possess will abound more and more. And God's love is a characteristic of every person who is truly born again. God's love, agape love, is a characteristic of every person who is truly born again. One commentator says this about the Philippian love, Philippi love. I quote, it says, At Philippi, love showed itself to be of the very essence of the new nature given to a believer. No sooner had Lydia become a Christian than she pressed Paul and his company to become her guest. No sooner had the jailer become a Christian. Though he had earlier fastened the apostle feet in chains, he began to bait their wounds. When the hostility of the people made Paul leave Philippi, the church by contrast identified with his this persecuted apostle and send him help more than once. Love was their new nature in Christ. So, one of the things that Jesus says that the way people will know that you're my disciples is love. Somebody say love. The way people you know that you're born again is the kind of love that is flowing from you. Not physical things. Not, not the way we look. Not the way we dress. 
Look at what Paul told Thessalonians about their love. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. Can I get it in Amplify, please? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. Paul told the Thessalonian Christians something very profound. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 9 to 11. He says, But concerning brotherly love for all other Christians, you have no need to have anyone write you. For you yourself have been personally taught by God to love one another. Amen? And indeed, you already are extending and displaying your love to all the brethren throughout Macedonia. But we beseech and earnestly exalt you, brethren, that you excel. Somebody say excel. Say somebody excel in your love. He said that you excel in this matter. What matter? Love. So they had it. But he said, you must excel in it. In this matter, more and more and more. So you don't love once in a while. You love all the time. If we're going to be true disciples, if people are going to know that we're saved, that we belong to Jesus, our love, must excel. Our love for one another must what? Excel. On matters of love must come up higher. Amen, church. We must do what? Come up higher. It says, verse 11, to make it your ambition and definitely endeavor to live quietly and peacefully, to mind your own affairs I won't go to that one yet. Okay. Let's, let's stay with this, this law. So Paul said to Thessalonians that God had taught them to love each other. So I don't need to write you. I don't need to prompt you. I don't need to uh, do any special thing. God has already taught you. How did God teach us the commandment? Say love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Love is resident in every believer because God has given it to them. Love is resident in your life. Love is resident in my life because God has given it to us. The question is, are you going to give it? And he's constantly teaching believers to love more and more. In fact, John said this in 1 John 3, verse 14 to 16. Amplify. 1 John 3, 14 to 16. 1 John 3, 14 to 16. It says, we know that we have passed over out of debt into life by the fact that we love the brethren. It says, that is our fellowship as believers. He who does not love abides, that is, remains, is held and kept continually in sp is in what? Spiritual debt. So, Paul says to the Thessalonians, uh, to, 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 uh, John says, anyone who doesn't love is going through spiritual debt. That's heavy. And that explains a lot of things. Because we may be going through spiritual debt because we are in loggerhead with our fellow believers 
and think we, everything is okay. But the scripture said that person is actually dying spiritually. Amen? We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. We love our sisters. Anyone who does not love remains in debt. Every person who is truly born again loves the family of God. Amen, church. They love one another. And John said this, dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So guess what? In 1 John 4, 7 to 8, that's what I'm just reading. He said, every person who is truly born again loves the family of God. They love one another. John also said this. Let us love one another. It is hard to come up higher if you don't love your sister. It is hard to come up higher if you don't love your brother. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. And knows God. So, if you don't love, you don't know God. Amen, church. Amen, church. You see, my brothers and my sisters, I pray the Holy Spirit will help us all to come up higher and to excel in, on this matter. It's critical. Everyone who loves has been born of God. A sign that you have been born born of God and knows God is that you walk in love. Whoever does not love does not know God. That's what the scripture says. First John 4, 7 to 8. So a sure sign that you know God is that you walk in love. There's so many smoke screen in the body of Christ. There's so many distractions that makes us believe that this person knows God or loves God. But the Bible is here. This is how you know that everyone who has been born of God knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. The agape love was immediately poured out into believers when they got saved. When we all got saved, that love was poured into us. Please, go with me. Let me show you something. Romans 5 verse 5 in the NLT. Romans 5 5. Let me show you something. It was poured into us. So you don't have to manufacture it. It says, And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with what? With what? Come on, talk to me, church. With what? He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. So God has given it. He has poured into us the very moment you're saved. It is now for us to begin to use it. You, can, you don't have to manufacture it. Hope does not disappoint. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us. Look at what Christ says in, in Matthew 5, verse 44 to 45. He said, but I tell you, now this is, we're getting there now. 
love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be what sons of your father in where heaven he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous you see Jesus also says in the same Matthew 5, verse 41, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them how many? Go with them how many? Go with them how many? Two miles. This is very profound. This is very profound for us to understand. If we are going to truly enjoy our relationship with our heavenly father. We need to walk in obedience to his word. It can be very difficult, I know. It can be very tough, I know. But God has given us the capacity to love. In the name of Jesus. I read the story of a Chinese Christian. Who was a farmer. Who lived beside communist neighbor in China. It's a, it's, a, it's a farming community. They farm rice. So this Christian irrigated his rice farm by pumping water out of a canal in the most laborious and difficult process. Using one of those leg operated pumps that make the user appear to be seated on a bicycle for long. Meanwhile, you have to sit and be using your leg to be paddling that device so that it can be pumping water out of the canal to irrigate your farm. So there was a, this communist also had a farm next to him. But there is a board like something demarcating both farms. So this Christian will wake up and irrigate and work hard and pump water to irrigate. So once he pumped enough, then the irrigation will start. So guess what happened? So every day, after this Christian had pumped enough water to irrigate his farm, the communist neighbor will come out, remove the demarcation that separates his farm from his, so that all the water he has pumped will be moving to his own farm. So he kept doing that. He kept doing that. And this continues day after day. And finally, the Christian Chinese farmer prayed. He said, Lord, if this thing keeps up, I'm going to lose my rice and I've got a family to feed. What can I do? In answer to his question, the Lord put a thought in his mind. So the next morning, he arose early in pre-dawn hours of darkness and started pumping water into the farm of his communist neighbor. He pumped water into his farm. Then he replaced the board and pumped water into his own rice farm. In a matter of few weeks, both rice farms were doing very well. And the communists came to this man and ask for forgiveness. And ask to be saved. What is the implication of this story for us? As followers of Jesus. We should never forget. The disarming power. Of a Christian love. It is very disarming. There are times God will allow you to go through a circumstance 
that seemingly appear negative to you, but is for a greater glory for him. God needed the communists. Communists are atheists. They don't believe in God. So God needed him to be saved. But look at the process. It is not that he went to evangelize and to the man and give him tract. It came in a very tough, challenging way. This Christian had to get up. God put the thought in his heart. Believe you, you are brothers and my sisters, on your own, you can't love your enemy. On your own, you cannot love your enemy. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. When you look at the magnitude of things people may have done to you, on your own, you have packed them. Pack them, lock the key, throw it, throw it away. Now, <laughs> Praise the Lord. How can someone love his enemies? It is only possible, listen beloved, because love is an act of the will, an act of obedience to God. It is not driven by emotion. Love is an act of the will. It's an act of the obedience to, to God. It's not driven by emotion. It's an act of obedience to God. It's not subject to feeling. We can love because God has commanded us to do so. So when you think of obeying God and obeying how you feel, who will you when you look at love in your neighbor as an act of obedience to God it sheds a different light praise the Lord church praise the living Jesus praise the living Jesus it sheds what? a different light we can love because God has commanded us to do so. In fact, scripture even declares that the biblical love is obedience. Christ said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will do what? Talk to me, church, you do what? You will obey what I command. What is his commandment? Eh? God. That's his commandment. So Jesus said, the only way you can prove that you love me is to love one another. Because if you tight and don't love, you have a problem. If you do come to church, do all you can do early, everything, and have no love, there is a problem. Amen, church? Whoever has my commands obeys them. He's the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and show myself to him. That's John 14, 21. So I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you. So when Jesus said this, did he know that there will be time people will offend us? Did he know? Yes, of course he knew. He knew there will be time people are going to step on your last nerves. He knows. He said, just as I love you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are mine disciples your love for one another we prove to the world that you are my disciples so when we are guided by this principle when we are guided by this commandment there will be no pretense you see designer clothes are known by their trademarks 
or design. You can know if it's a uh, mention one. A tummy. When you see it, it has a, a trademark. You can know if it's Apollo, if it's horse playing golf. They have trademarks that makes them very visible and very identifiable. Those who hold offices of unique kind can be identified by their attire. You can know a doctor, even though some of them wear suits. But it's generally speaking, we see somebody with a bush jacket and a stethoscope. You, you don't use stethoscope. Yeah, pharmacy, but you wear bush jacket. Yes. Okay. But you can tell that this is a, a doctor. Just by the attire. You can tell a policeman. You can tell who is a judge by the way they look. In the same way, God has sent an irrefutable evidence that we are close to God's an irrefutable test by which we can measure our own spiritual growth and maturity. In fact, so awesome is this trademark of God. He said it will be the major declaration of your faith. Jesus puts it this way. By this shall men know that you are my disciples. That you love one another. So the trademark, just as you will see Tommy and all that brands, the trademark of a believer is in the way they love one another. Anything else is of inferior standard. Because Jesus says, by this shall men know. He didn't use any other criteria. By this shall men know that you are my disciples. That you love one another. Our fellowship with God, beloved, is validated or invalidated by the love of others. Although I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountain and I have no charity, I'm nothing. That's what Paul says, 1 Corinthians 13. So it doesn't matter how much you can pray. It doesn't matter how much you war in the spirit. If you don't know how to love people, you are not spiritually mature. Amen, church. Amen, church. It doesn't matter how many Bible verses you can quote verbatim. If you don't know how to treat people, you are still a baby in Christianity. A sign of spiritual maturity is in your ability to love when it's not humanly possible to love. Your ability to love when it's not humanly possible to love. Love is like a muscle. You have to work it in order for it to grow stronger. The stronger your love muscle is, the stronger you will be in life. Amen, church. You won't become a stranger. You won't become stronger by running away from problems. You only get stronger by dealing with things head on and dying to yourself so that God can rise in you. God wants to rise in us. On those moments when people hurt you deeply, God wants to rise in you. On those moments people speak words that made you feel sad, God wants to rise in you. On those moments that people disappoint you, 
God wants to rise in you. On those moments, people step on the nerves you have. God wants to rise in you. He wants to express himself through you. He wants to express himself in your pain. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. The way we've been accustomed is, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back at her. I'm going to get back at him. In those moments, God wants to rise in us. God wants to express himself in us. He wants to express himself. He wants the world to know. Look at that moment when the Chinese rice farmer, he would have gone to the communists. Are you mad? Are you crazy? The, I woke up early pumping water and you have the gods to come and remove. Are you crazy? Today, me and you, we will finish this, this place. But God dropped something in his spirit, which helps me to understand that the righteousness of, the, the anger of man does not promote the righteousness of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. So you see, there's so many things we're dealing with in the body of Christ. And Paul came to the Thessalonians. He came to Philippa. He said, guys, you got to grow up. You got to come up higher. All this bickering malice that is going on, it's not going to work. Let's, let's rise up above them. Paul told them, on matters of understanding, on matters of the world, I want you to be mature. But when it comes to malice, be babies. You know, you know what that means? Children can quarrel now. The next minute, they are, they, are, they are playing again. But adults, <laughs> first of all, we take one like two days vacation to think about what we're going to do. <laughs> Amen. So Paul says, in matters of righteousness, be mature. But when it comes to malice, jealousy, envy, the children. Amen, church. So you only get stronger by dealing with things head on. The man, the farmer went to God. Say, God, if this thing continue, my farm is going to be impoverished. My children, my family is going to suffer. Show me what to do. And that is the spirit. That is the attitude we should have. When people offend you, go to God. Say, Father, show me what to do. Because if I act the way I'm feeling, it's going to make matters worse. Help me, Holy Spirit. And that's, what, that's, that's why the Holy Spirit is there. And when the Holy Spirit drops an idea, like when the Holy Spirit drops in this, this farmer's mind, go and irrigate, wake up early, irrigate his farm. Me? For what? You see, the way we deal with matters is not the way God deals with matters. His ways are different. From ours. And that is why it is vitally important that we rely on the Holy Spirit more than ever before. Whatever challenge you're going through, don't deal with it in a carnal nature. Just like this farmer, go to God in prayer quietly. God will put response to your mind. Because God is obligated to helping you to solve that mystery because on your own, you cannot do it. On my own, I cannot do it. And that is why you don't take matters into your own hands when you are a child of God. I urge everyone to take a closer look on this matter of love. These days, it's difficult to know who genuinely loves you without strings attached. 
Don't love because of what you can get, but because of what you can give. Don't love because of what you can get, but because of what you can give. Why? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Not many persons can love unconditionally without expecting something in return. Don't be strategic in your loving. Just be sincere. Strategic lovers show their true colors once they have received what they came for. Their attitude towards you change as soon as they have used you enough. Let us consider the words of a virtuous woman as I close. Who loved unconditionally. Even after she lost what she came for, she remained faithful. Even after she lost what she came for, she remained faithful. I close with Ruth chapter 1, verse 12 to 18. We know the story. She came into, she married into a family. The family migrated. They had issues where they got to their new location. She lost her husband. Her mother-in-law lost her son. There was trouble. There was adversity. And look at what she says. Can we go to, can we read it from verse 15? Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you leave, I will leave. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me so severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. My brothers and my sisters, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. You see, adversity will always come into our lives to validate our faithfulness. It will come to validate our faithfulness to God. Amen, church. She was given the opportunity to live. The reason why you're here is no longer here. Your husband is gone. Go. Go elsewhere. Go find another husband. Just move on. She said, My coming to this family was not strategic. It was sincere. Though my husband is gone, but I remain faithful. And when you look at this, and God sometimes will allow adversity into our lives to show if we really love him. To show if we really care. Or maybe you're praying to God for something. And God opens the door. And something happens in between. Will you still be the same person? Even in this virus crisis. And social distances. Some of us have become complacent. In our relationship with God. It appears the virus has given us. Some more reasons. To be spiritually laid back. Like never before, this is the time to demonstrate your love and commitment to the things of God. Don't allow the devil to use this virus to pour cold water on your spiritual life. Keep the fire burning. The fire on the altar of your life will never go out. My brothers and my sisters, I believe the Lord has spoken to us today. I don't know where this message finds you.
But a true mark of spiritual maturity is your love for one another. It is difficult for you to love God that you don't see. For you can't love the person you see. Let's rise up on our feet. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you to reflect on what you've had. God has poured a measure of love into all of us. But he said, let that love abound more and more and more and more. Choose to be obedient to the word of God. Irrespective of what people may have done to you. Choose to be obedient to the word of God. And God will reward you for being obedient to him. Your emotion is unstable. You cannot trust it. Or you can trust the word of God. Just ask God for help. You know, I have reviewed my life in light of this. And I've asked and prayed that the Holy Spirit will help me. To make amends where I have shortcomings. You and I must do the same. But the only measure that you know God is how you love your neighbor. If that is lacking in your life, I'm sorry to say you don't know God. Just ask God for help. This word has come to sanctify us. He says, sanctify us with the truth. Your word is the truth. I pray this word will bring transformation into our lives. Now, when people see us, they will know we love God by the way we love one another. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. May this word that you have sent to us bring the well-needed transformation that we need. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your message, oh Lord God, that we have heard today. Father, Lord, we thank you for how you have made us to know, oh Lord, that we need to love one another. Father, Lord, we bless your name, oh Lord. We thank you for your servant that you have used, oh Lord, this morning. 
that as poor, O oh Lord God, your message to us, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you for the anointing upon his life. Father, we bless your name, O oh Lord. We say may your name be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we have heard your word this morning, O oh Lord, Father, that we know that the way, O oh Lord God, to grow maturely is to love. Father, Lord, we pray that you help us to love, O oh Lord. The agape love, O oh Lord, let it be among us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you increase, O oh Lord God, the anointing upon your son that you have used this morning. Father, Lord, so that, O oh Lord, he will love more in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. We say may your name be exalted. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The next song we are going to give our offering. Please, we want you to put your hand in your pocket or go into your bag and bring out your, your offering in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> unto us to give, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for, your, for the job that you have provided for us to be able to give. Father, Lord, this is part of the love, O oh Lord God, that we have for you, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for even those that do not have, O oh Lord, we pray that you bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh Lord God, that this offering as we have given, O oh Lord, we pray may it be used for the propagation of your gospel, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we also pray for those that do not have. We pray that you provide for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered for in Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Do we have any tithers in our midst this morning? Please come forward. The Bible said to honor the Lord with your wealth. Praise the Lord. 
praise the living Jesus. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for your children. Lord, they have honored you this morning by taking the first fruit of their wealth, one-tenth of their earning to you this morning. Father, we raise it up before you. Lord, we ask that you'll bless them. You have promised, Lord, that when they honor you in this way, you will open the windows. Many windows are in heaven. You said you'll open the windows of heaven and pour upon them a blessing. We thank you because you're true to your word. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you'll pour upon their lives. We thank you because these one will never be embarrassed financially in the name of Jesus. We thank you because these ones will enjoy good health. These one will continue to increase in wealth, in health. From glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Daddy, in a time like this, where persons are crying for financial downturn, these ones will never be able to relate in the name of Jesus. Instead, their song will be upward ever in the name of Jesus. I thank you for their jobs. I pray, oh God, that in any area, oh God, that they are looking up to you, for increase. Lord, we ask that you'll promote them. We ask, oh God, that these one, whenever they're called upon to meet a need, Father, they'll be more than able to do such in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you will accept this one in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh uh, that's too cold. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, better. Today is a special day, a special Sunday, because today is Father's Day. And we want to take out time to pray for them. I would like all our fathers to just stand wherever they are. Please stand. Hallelujah. And those that are at home watching us, just connect to us here because I know that God will touch us in a special way today because he loves us. Amen? Shall we pray? Dear Father, we bless and adore you this morning. We want to thank you for how you have been fathering us. Especially, we want to thank you for all the fathers in Jesus' house, the kingdom champion, and as many that are affiliated with us. Lord, we want to appreciate you, we want to thank you for how you have been sustaining them. Thank you, dear Lord God, because only you could have kept them up till today. And so we are careful to give you praise. We are careful to give you honor. We are careful to give you adoration. For your goodness and faithfulness unto them. Accept our thanks and praises in Jesus name. And so Lord you said in your word. That we shall decree a thing. And it shall be done unto us. Concerning all the fathers. And even the potential fathers in Jesus house. Lord, today we declare that they will fulfill your purpose in the name of Jesus. We declare that their love will abound more and more for you. 
that Lord, they will desire more and more of you in their lives in the name of Jesus. We declare that today, all our fathers will fulfill their God-given role in the name of Jesus. We declare that they shall be good examples of fathers. We pray, dear Lord God, as Joshua declared, that they and their household shall love the Lord. They shall serve the Lord. They shall please the Lord in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare concerning all our fathers in Jesus' house that none of them will lose the kingdom in the name of Jesus. But Lord, they will love and serve you to the end. Lord, we pray that, Lord, financially, Lord, you will continue to multiply them. You will continue to bless them. We declare that whatsoever they lay their hands upon shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, we pray, dear Lord, as you have made them the heads in the homes, they will forever be the heads. And not tell in the name of Jesus. Lord, in their work, in their businesses, we declare, Lord, that they will continue to abound in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in your word that, Lord, those that love you, those that serve you, you will distinguish them from those that serve you not. And so we declare concerning every member of kingdom champion Lord God that you will distinguish them even in their work, in their business in their profession in the name of Jesus Lord financially Lord you will bless them more than they can ever imagine in the name of Jesus Lord we also pray for them the Lord, you will cause them to be fulfilled in life. Spiritually, they shall be fulfilled. Economically, they shall be fulfilled. Emotionally, they will be fulfilled. In their home, they shall be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus. Dear Father, we pray for them this morning. The Lord God of heaven, you will cause their home. To be heaven on heart in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your peace will be their portion. Lord, we pray for our men, the fathers in the house. Oh God of heaven, beyond even their expectations, you will grant unto them. Because you said in your word that the desire of the righteous shall be granted. And so, Lord, because you know their hard desires, you know their struggles, Lord, we declare concerning them today that their hard desires shall be granted in the name of Jesus. Their Father will bless you. Lord in heaven, as you answer the prayer of Jabez, and you made him to be more honorable than his equals, Lord, concerning all the fathers in the house, Lord, we pray today that, Lord, you will distinguish them. Lord, that your hands will rest upon them. Lord, we pray that they will not have pains. In the name of Jesus, Lord, the Bible says, as mountains surround Jerusalem, those, Lord, those, Lord, you surround those that love you. And so we pray concerning all the fathers in the house that with long life you will satisfy them and you will show them your salvation. No evil will befall any one of them. You will preserve their going out and their coming in. And we declare that it is well with them in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless and adore you because you are a faithful father. And so you will continue to prove yourself faithful in their lives. 
in the name of Jesus. We declare that today their head will not lack ointment. We pray that their garment shall remain white always in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We adore you, O oh God, because you are able to do exceeding abundantly above that which we are able to ask or imagine. And so you will do unto them. Lord, you, because you are their son, you are their shield. Grace and glory will abound unto them. And you will not withhold any good thing from them. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's put our hands together for Jesus, the Father of the Father. Hallelujah. All right. Fathers, you can have your seat. We have something special for you as you watch the video. Hi, Kingdom Champions. In particular, the fathers of Jesus House Kingston. Happy Father's Day to you all. Today is your day. I hope that you're relaxing or you're about to relax, sit back and enjoy the day. We love you. We appreciate you from the woman of favor. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to our Kingdom Champion. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and potential fathers. Happy Father's Day to Pastor George Kamalo. And happy Father's Day to my husband, my sweetheart. I say, may the Lord keep you up. May his face continue to shine upon you. You will be blessed beyond measure. You will be the head and never be the tail. I say, stay tuned because we have a lot of surprises for you. And be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Father's Day to the men we so lovingly call Kingdom Champions. Just wanted you all to know that we love you, we appreciate you, and we're grateful for you. The fact that we can share this moment with wonderful celebrities like you all truly brings us joy. My prayer for you all is that the Lord will increase your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in Him so that you may perfect His will and also perfect the ability to love, guide, and protect your families in Jesus' name. Love you. I'd like to wish all the fathers in Jesus' house happy Father's Day. I pray that the Lord continues to give you wisdom to lead your children on the right path and to be the best husband to your wife. I pray that God will continue to guide you in this great responsibility so that you will not fail. And that in years to come, when you look back, you will know that the Lord has been your own. And to my husband, I'd like to say I'm proud of the father that you're becoming. And I pray that God will continue to strengthen you to be the best. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all fathers at Jesus' house. I pray that today your lives will be filled with joy and gladness. Thank you for the vital role that you play in your children's lives. I recognize you and honor you today as mighty men of valor. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers of Jesus House Kingston. May the good Lord continue to protect you, to guide you, and to strengthen you. Your hand is blessed, your head is blessed, your leg is blessed, everything is blessed. I want to give a special shout out to my husband, George Flash. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Happy Father's Day. We want to celebrate the grace of God upon all the fathers in Jesus' house. And even the potential fathers. We appreciate God for you. We want to thank you. You've been excellent. You've been so good. And we bless the Lord for all this. I want to thank God especially for my husband the father of our children, my friend. God has been gracious to you, and I trust God that God will continue to keep you and preserve you. For all the fathers in Jesus' house and the potential fathers, I pray that the Lord will continue to keep you, the hand of the Lord will continue to rest upon you. God will multiply
multiply his grace on you to fulfill his purpose and you be good example of father to our children to the society and to the world at large enjoy your day god bless you happy father's day to all the fathers and potential fathers may you all have a wonderful and blessed day Hi everyone, I just want to wish all the fathers of Kingdom Champion Jesus House a happy, happy Father's Day to you all, especially to the man of God, Pastor Josh Kamalo. A happy Father's Day to you. Continue being the man you are, continue being the father you are to all of us, and also to my husband, a big shout out. Happy birthday to you, and happy Father's Day to you also. Continue to be the man you are, and a happy, happy Father's Day once more to you all. Blessings. Kingdom Champion. Happy Father's Day to you all. Wishing you a wonderful and blessed day. To Pastor Kamala, happy belated birthday to you, sir. Sorry I was unable to celebrate with your drive through surprise celebration, but I wish you a blessed and prosperous day and many, many more days ahead. To Kingdom Soldiers, blessed Father's Day to you all. Wish you all the best and hope to reunite with all of you soon. Lots of love and blessing. Happy Father's Day to Kingdom Champions of Jesus House Kingston and to all our visiting fathers. Congratulations on yet another Father's Day. God has been faithful. He has kept you throughout this pandemic and I know that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy all that God has in store for you today. God bless you. We love you. Happy Father's Day, Kingdom Champion. I wish you guys all the best this Father's Day. I hope you enjoy yourself. Pastor George Kamalu, I wish you a wonderful Father's Day. Enjoy yourself. One love. Big up. We thank God for another Father's Day. We thank God for Kingdom Champion. We thank God for all the fathers you are blessing to us. Fathers and prospective fathers, we are so delighted to celebrate this day with you. You will ever remain the head and never the tail. Whatsoever you lay your hands to do, you prosper. And you will never fail in your role as fathers and as husbands. And the Lord will keep you and bless you beyond measures in the name of Jesus Christ. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Kingdom Champion. Kingdom Champion, moving forward. Today is the day that the Lord has made. A day set aside to honor the fathers and potential fathers of Jesus' house. We pray that the Almighty God will continue to uphold you, will cause you to fulfill your God-given purpose on earth. We pray that the windows of heaven will open over your life, that you will remain the head and never the tail in the name of Jesus. Today, we want to pray that your children will walk after you in righteousness and integrity in the name of Jesus. A special shout out to Pastor George Kamalu, the husband of my youth. Happy Father's Day to you, sir. May God continue to uphold you and strengthen you in his righteous right hand in the name of Jesus. Kingdom champion, we love you. We celebrate the faithfulness of God in your lives today. Please relax and enjoy the day. Women of favor, we are here to do you good. God bless you. Love you.
Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, 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 praise be to the Lord. Yes, it's another Father's Day. Um, I don't know where to start, but I know that today is a wonderful day, another sweet day that we are here to celebrate our fathers. And uh, I think there is cake here for fathers to cut. So in keeping with uh, the social distancing of this season, so we are going to um, do it in a, a special way. We will, I think we will have to get 10, 10 fathers Pastor will be here. So, like I said, keeping with the social distancing protocol. So, ten fathers will come. So, at the count of Thank you. 
Today to just pass by like that without, you know, the fathers rejoicing in the presence of God. So we want all the fathers and the potential fathers to please go move out. We're going to dance in. We're going to rejoice before the presence of God. It's going to be led by pastor. We're going to lead the dance. We just don't want today to be boring. Even though, you know, we, we thank God for giving us the privilege to be alive up to today. So we have to rejoice in the presence of God. Please, we want you to move out. We want you to dance from the back. It's going to be led by pastor, followed by pastor Adeoye, followed by the ministers. We want you to dance, please. Brother Andrew, we want you to join them to dance, please. We want you to dance, to shake, you know, to shake your body, to dance, to show how gracious our God is. Praise the Lord. Younger and younger. 
This time go for his life. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank God for this day. Our God has been faithful. We thank God. We bless you. Oh my God, see my pastor there. Yeah. See Pastor Adioye. I can't believe this. Wow. Wow, our God has been faithful. Oh my God. Oh, we bless your name, oh Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you that we did not allow this day to just pass by like that. We thank you, Lord. Oh my God. Thank God for the constellation. Wow, you can dig it more than that. You can dig it, dig it, man. To bless the name of God. Wow. Wow. Thank God. Our God has been faithful. Oh my God. See my deacon. Deacon Flash. Doing it gently. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. God has been so good. Wow. See brother Joye. Oh my God, doing it in an unusual way. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. See, brother Christopher. Oh my God. See, my engineer. My engineers. God has been faithful. Our God has been so faithful. Oh, my brother Miller. Oh my God. God has been so good. We bless your name, oh Lord. Oh God, we thank you. We bless you. We adore your name. Oh, Brother Gideon, God has been faithful in your life. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. Oh, my brother, God has been so good. You can dig it. You can dig it. You can dig it. Oh, Brother Wilson. Oh, Brother Wilson is really showing us how God has been faithful. God, oh my God, God has been so good. See how our Father, oh brother Delito, wow. See our doctor, no, you can't. You, oh doctor, please. Oh my God, see my brother, brother Williams, brother Hase. God has been good. Oh my God, see my brother. Oh, brother Richard, oh my God, you're going to teach me this test, man. Brother Richard, God has been so good. We bless God. Brother Davis, oh my God, God, we thank you. We bless your name. Our holy police, very faithful man. Of, very faithful man, we bless God in your life. Brother Frida, brother Frida, we thank you for your life. Today is his birthday. Today is his birthday. We celebrate the goodness of God in your life. Brother Freda, we thank God. Oh my God. Oh, see how he's rejoicing. This is special break dance. Break dance to God. We bless your name, oh Lord. We thank God for your life. Oh, we bless your name. Brother Conroy for you. Oh, my doctor. Oh, she, she, we bless God. Oh, brother, oh, brother, Duroja, we bless God in your life. Oh, brother, brother Robert, brother Robert, we thank God. Oh, my God, I love this head. Oh, brother Kumai, brother Kumai, we thank God. Oh, we thank God, oh Lord. We bless God. We thank God, oh Lord. Our God has been faithful. Our God has been faithful. We bless the name of God. We thank God, oh Lord. God has been so good. We thank God, oh Lord. We are still waiting for you, you know, Brother Andrew. Brother Andrew, we are waiting for you, Brother Andrew. Show the goodness of God in your life. Brother Andrew, we are waiting for you. We are waiting to see your dance steps. We are waiting.
champion how are you feeling so far awesome guess what there's still plenty more where that came from amen oh don't worry your stomach will be satisfied soon praise the lord anyway before we move on to the announcement we have a testimony from if someone's Greetings from Dr. Dr. Yalams, all the way from Nigeria. So he has a short greeting, and I think in that a part of the greeting is a testimony he wants to share as well. Praise the Lord. Go ahead with that video greeting. Members of the Jesus House, Kingston, Jamaica, it's a pleasure at least to send these greetings to you again on the occasion of the Father's Day. We want to specifically thank, I mean, appreciate the, the, the women of favor for keeping the husbands, uh, the kingdom champions. And we could imagine how some of the kingdom champions have really grown thick cheeks uh, because of the enjoyment, the treatment they are getting, even despite the COVID-19. Uh, this is Professor Yalams, uh, and we have our son here. I'm Andy Yalams. And then here you have... Okay, uh, we want to appreciate everybody and want to thank you for really having chance to have fellowship with you. Even though we are missing you, uh, we pray that one of these days we'll have chance to, to meet again and fellowship. Particularly, we want to send our greetings and good wish to the pastor and his dear wife, uh, pastor and Mrs. Kamalu and uh, members of the elders, and even the different subgroups. We want to thank you. Uh, we can remember some few faces. Uh, Engineer Odiaga, uh, Kuna, and then uh, uh, the Dancing Miller, uh, Flash, and who again? Okay, let, let, the, let, let, let our mommy now mention some of the names of the women. That she can remember. She can remember. So, Auntie Carol Shaw. Uh -huh. Let me see. What are your friends? Yeah, for the youth. Shout out to the youths. Wow. It's been so long. How many years now? It's nice to hear from you. And just wanted you guys to know that we're still in touch. And hi. Yes. To all the youths Daniel, Baisha, um, Michael, Brittany, and all the rest. If forget, forgive me, I'm Tashana. Lisa and Jordan, all the rest, if I forget to mention your names, just forgive me. Thank you very much. Just happy you Father's hand. Day. Happy Father's Day, Jesus. To everybody. Has Hello, Jesus has. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Wow. Happy Father's Day to the Kingdom Champions. Yes, yes. We I'm, really miss you, and we are doing great here in Nigeria. Yes. My regards to everybody in Jesus' house. Amen. Amen. Especially Sister Debbie, uh, Sister Carlin. Mrs. 
Father's Day, and thank God they remembered a lot of persons, to God be the glory. Welcome to Jesus' house, where men and women are empowered for godly living. Whether you're here with us, or you have joined us by the World Wide Web, we say welcome. And this morning, I have to specially say, I celebrate our Heavenly Father. He's the first Father who taught our kingdom champions and our fathers how to be fathers, a good father. And I celebrate our fathers here today. Happy Father's Day to you. For those who, of you who are watching online, I say happy Father's Day as well. And may the Lord continue to empower you to do that which he have called you to be, to hover over, to protect your family, to teach them God's way. Bless the Lord. If it is your first time joining us, I want to say welcome. We're so happy to have you. And here at Jesus House, we are committed to giving you the unadulterated word of God. And today you heard the message coming up higher. And I'm going to ask you to join us again next week as we continue the series coming up higher. Amen. Bless the Lord. Our prayer meeting is at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. You can join us online and we're, the church doors are also open for you to come in. On Thursdays at 6 p.m. as well, we have our Bible study and that is done on our zoom platform and the access code is now being displayed on the screen we would love to hear from you if you have a testimony or you need prayer or you simply just want to drop us a line and let us know how much you enjoyed the service you can call us on 876-920-2200 Six zero, or you can send us an email and that address is also being displayed. You can also contact us on these numbers from Tuesday to Thursday between 12 noon and 3 p.m. Let us love the Lord. Let us love the Lord with all our heart and let our love abound this week as the Spirit of God empowers us. Today is a special day for a special person. Brother Delroy's birthday is today. Can we celebrate him? Bless the Lord. I'll now hand over to Pastor Kamalu. Brother Delroy, can you come up for prayer, please? Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you for another opportunity to celebrate another milestone in his life. Lord, I want to thank you for how far you have brought him. 
I pray, Lord, for your blessings over his life today. That you will release, oh God, great wisdom, understanding unto him. Even in this new age, he will function even much better than he used to in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace, oh God, to continue to live godly, you will release upon his life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will satisfy him with long life, that all that he does, Lord, you will bless in the mighty name of Jesus. That this one, oh God, will continue to be a pillar of righteousness in your kingdom in the name of Jesus. In his role as a father, he will not fail. In his role as a husband, he will not fail. Thank you, mighty God, for in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to say a special thank you to women of favor. Praise the Lord. Amen. On behalf of Kingdom Champions, I want to say a very big thank you. You have made us feel so special today. I know you still have a lot of surprises coming. We're still here. Praise the Lord. So, but I just want to extend this thank you on behalf of Kingdom Champion. We're really grateful for the time you guys have put in to make us feel special today. We say a big thank you. We truly appreciate the love. We appreciate everything you have done and all that you're still going to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Kingdom champion, could you rise on your feet, please? Let's give this wonderful woman a round of applause. Come on, let's do it one more time. One more time. Amen. God bless you, you may be seated. We appreciate you all. Amen. Um, we're going to close the service now. Shall we rise? And after the service, Kingdom Champions, please remain. Like I said, it's not over yet. Uh, the women still have a lot coming in stock. And uh, so let's enjoy this day that the Lord has made for us. In Jesus. after me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Sin will not have dominion over me. Sin cannot have dominion over me. I will cooperate with the Holy Spirit to make this confession a reality in my life. I shall live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord. Only the counsel of the Lord concerning me shall stand. The counsel of the Lord that says, He has turned around my captivity. 
I'm like them that dream dreams. I'm the head and not the tail. Because for the righteous, it is favor. My irreversible has become reversible. Every tide against me has begun to work for my good. Because Jesus Christ has delivered me from every cause of the law. The blessings of Abraham is my portion. And I know certainly, definitely, I'm waxing great. I am moving forward. I'm increasing till I become very great. And now the Lord has made room for me. And I'm fruitful in this land. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. And surely, all the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. God bless you all. May the peace of God go with you. Please, Kingdom Champion, remain seated.